Good morning, folks. We've got solar flares. They're not big or scary, but they represent the first such uptick from sunspots in a long while. We've got news from beneath our feet out to the deepest reaches of space as we come to spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star starting to look exciting. Two bright points of the active regions, coronal hole on the south. The active regions do look fiery in 304 angstroms of light showing ionized helium, along with the plasma filaments dancing around the limbs. Let's do the solar wind first. We are exiting the sparse coronal hole streams, which have seemed to lump together for days as telemetry begins to descend and geomagnetic conditions unsurprisingly remain calm and quiet. But we've got minor movement on the X-ray flux. It's coming from the active region nearing center disk on the north today. You can see her crackling, but also how the umbral fields are in a somewhat stable setup. The active region quadrupled in size in a matter of hours yesterday, and as of this morning it maintains a beta magnetic class polarity with positive blue and negative red, but they are split to opposite sides of the grouping like boys and girls at a middle school dance, and that's got the field set up running nicely lateral across the grouping. More unstable field setups mean larger solar flares, so we will be monitoring the active region today. Top quake of the last day was an aftershock to the 6.2 they had up there in the Aleutian Islands a few days ago, and we are also monitoring a surface swarm in Oceania that followed a few blot echoes at the southern reach of the uptick. Our first article today is a nice note on climate science. Looking to improve forecast modeling, they are suggesting the importance of the largest scale planetary waves like Rossby waves. These are some of the hundreds of atmospheric phenomena known to be modulated by solar activity, and it does represent a baby step in the right direction. Golf clap. Up next, we're going to the center of the Milky Way. We are piercing through the veils of dust and gases to find the closest in stars to the galactic center, Sagittarius A. The bright star doing a close loop is known as S2. It was the subject of many studies as it whipped around the galactic nucleus the last few years. But if you can notice that there are smaller, much dimmer blotches appearing to be even closer into the core, one of those is a star they are calling S62, and while it doesn't shine like S2, it's got the orbit beat at just under 10 years, while S2 is on a 15-year orbit. We officially have the new, closest-in orbiter known at the center of the galaxy. A stepping stone here to larger-scale cosmology discussions, it is so frustrating when authors title a paper like they've made a tremendous discovery and then go on to describe how they are hoping to have measurable results in the right direction with a method or telescope that doesn't yet exist. Jackals. So we go on to something real, the cosmic web of plasma filaments. It is also known as the warm hot intergalactic medium, and it's been known to hold up to 50% of the matter particles of the universe in those sparse streams. Well, today they are stepping that up even more, confirming that all the missing baryons are in the cosmic web. This is something we have heard about before, no doubt, but it's a great confirmation, and again, it makes a huge difference to find all of those missing particles in currents, which create electric and magnetic fields, and where they mean much more to the large-scale cosmology than if they were simply spread out randomly in a diffuse, sparse vacuum field. Now, last but not least, we've got another look at galactic magnetism in the Milky Way, and in addition to demonstrating the undulation of the central rippling sheet, they were able to confirm the spiral field form of the larger structure, as we'd expect from a Parker-like spiral, as the Orion arm was shown to be threaded with magnetic fields along the line of sight up and down the arm. Folks, the changes to the climate change discussions, the cosmology at the largest scale, and the catastrophe inevitably recurring due to that undulating galactic current sheet. They're all detailed in our three movies linked below the video. You can catch up on nine years of science and three core physics topics at a layman level in literally one afternoon. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.